Tonight's News Nation's Ashley Banfield spoke exclusively with the parents of Kaylee Gonzalez, one of the four murder victims. Steve and Christy Gonzalez described the surreal moment when they saw the man in person for the first time who's accused of murdering their daughter. Christy, it's um it's always a shock to to face the person who's alleged to have committed these horrendous acts and changed your lives forever. If you could say something to this person, um, what would you say? I would just, you know, I wouldn't want to give him too much. Um, but I mean, I would tell him that, uh, you know, he destroyed our lives in an aspect. Does he realize what he has taken from us, from these four families? I mean, Ethan was a triplet. Maddie was an only child. Xana had siblings. Kaylee was one of five. She was the middle child. She had two older siblings, two younger siblings. Um, just the immense loss. I mean, did he really think, I mean, he did really think about it, which makes it really hard, but um, why? And I, I would add to that, that uh, if you were looking for cruel girls that were bullies to you through your life when you were struggling, you picked the wrong girls. My girls have been through a lot and um, they weren't the ones to pick on somebody that because they were uh, overweight or they were struggling and people weren't, they were actually the ones to stick up for you. So yeah, you picked the wrong person if you were looking for vengeance on some people that were mean to you in your life and you picked the wrong community and uh, we're going to, we're going to have to hold you accountable for that mistake. And joining me now is News Nation host Ashley Banfield. Ashley, thank you for some of your time. You know, we have a lot of questions to talk about. Uh, but first, you know, I really want to focus on what we just heard from there. I think so many people get caught up in the mystery of it all and trying to solve the crime. And there are families at the heart of this that have to live with this for the rest of their lives. Yeah, and you just heard Stephen Christie refer to the fact that they had five kids. They now have four. And we talked about that last night, Nicole, the fact that, you know, the kids are going through a lot. They lost their sister. Uh, they're watching their parents in the torment and pain that they're trying to go through. And this is going to go on. This is the beginning of the legal process, right? So they're going to have to face Brian Koberger and the legal, you know, loopholes that he will try to exploit in his defense. And it's going to be a very painful couple of years. If it's a death penalty case, it's going to be a very painful couple of decades. I'm not going to lie. That's usually what it takes in order to put someone to death, even if it does happen. Um, I'd also want to mention that Joe Petito went through this with his kids um, when they lost Gabby. And he talked about um, how important it was to talk with his children about their healing process and to watch them like a hawk to make sure that they were going to be okay and that they were being allowed to process it and to explain Ex you know, explain how they felt because many times kids won't. They don't want their parents to hurt any more than they already do, which is just it's sort of mind blowing to have to think about that. But that's right. just one of the things these people are going through. Right, they're going through the grieving process. You know, as this case will now proceed in court. Uh, so, so Ashley, you mentioned there some defense loopholes that this defendant you know will likely use. So we learned today the defense is now asking for the crime scene to be preserved. We know at least until February first. Talk about the strategy there. Oh, it makes perfect sense. Like I can see, I can, I can almost plan this whole thing out. And over the next, you know, course of months and years, you're going to hear all sorts of things like, well, if the cell phone didn't ping in the two hours that the murders were committed, well, then how could you possibly say that, you know, Brian Koberger was there? And the prosecution will say, well, because he turned it off. Um, then the next thing they'll say is, well, uh, if there's no DNA in his car, how can you say it was him? Well, because he cleaned his car in Pennsylvania. What I'm saying here is that there's going to be a lot that the defense can work with. There always is. But then you got to look at 12 people and you have to say, does that sound reasonable to you right. after what you just heard from the pro Is that reasonable? And then the jurors have to say, is my doubt reasonable? And right. everybody's different, right? Everybody has a different barometer of what's reasonable. I've seen jurors stuck on the most ridiculous chasm that, you know, is, is a plink to get over, and they think it's a massive leap. Uh, but that's what you're going to see here. You're going to see a defense team try to find 
anything they can to get one juror on that you know jury mm -hmm. to say, I don't know, maybe there is doubt. But most people, they're pretty reasonable. So Ashley, you know, we have viewers writing in, they're asking questions, and I want to focus on this, uh, the judge now saying that, that the scene has to be preserved. Well, so some people are wondering why were police back out there today and appear to be taking things out of the home if it needs to be, either it needs to be preserved or they're going to take things out. So, you know, I didn't get the, I didn't get the impression. I, I knew that Brian said he was pretty sure that they were detectives, but I was looking for insignia or something to prove that they were detectives as opposed to some very big burly guys who might have been working for the defense. I don't think that the defense would have been allowed to remove anything from the home. But now that the defense team is going into the home and the defense does have access to evidence, they always have to have access to evidence, mm -hmm. The prosecution may have thought, you know, before we start allowing the defense team to throw luminol all over the place, let's get some of the more critical uh, pieces of evidence out of the home and into a protected chain of custody. And we will allow the defense to get their look at it, absolutely, but in a pristine environment where we can oversee what's happening and we can see what chemicals are being used, we can see what process is being used. We don't want to taint any of the evidence. Now that we have a guy, right? Now that we have a guy and we could maybe see things in a different way and we might want to actually test evidence in a different way or test, you know, theories in a different way. That may be why they're removing big pieces like beds. And I've seen beds brought into courtrooms before yeah. and reset up in the middle of the courtroom. And it may happen again this time. Ashley, I could talk to you about this for the rest of the hour. We have to go. Thank you so much for your insight, providing some important nuance for it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.